Hey guys, welcome to another In The Style Of tutorial. I hope you're well and you've been practicing hard. Today we're going to be looking at a world class musician who's worked heavily as a session bass player alongside legendary bands and artists and whilst doing so has also been able to develop his own musical voice. The musician that I'm talking about is Bobby Vega. Bobby started working out with uh, Bo Diddley when he was only 15 years old, then from, from that he went on to work with artists and bands such as Sly Stone, Tower of Power, Etta James, Denise Williams, just to name a few. Bobby is really technically gifted, he's really tuned in with the slapping and the popping, with the thing style, but what he's become renowned for is his funky plectrum playing. And that is what we're going to be looking at today. Now to help me out with this study piece, I've acquired the help of two of my funkiest friends, guitarist Johnny Hayes and drummer Joe Evans. You can find a separate video on my YouTube channel of us playing this track together. So make sure you check that out, hit subscribe, follow those musicians and get them on your gigs. So let's check out the study piece. So let's check out the main groove in the introduction. The main groove is based on an E7 chord. The notes of an E7 chord are E, G sharp, B and D. Now when I mention an E7 chord, the scale that you should immediately be thinking of is a Mixolydian scale. This is theoretically and orally correct. However, from looking at the score and playing the groove, you'll notice that there are a few other hip notes which are outside of the Mixolydian scale. These hip notes come from certain harmonic implications which you can use in this context to generate a funkier vibe. So you can use an E blues scale. those hip notes being the minor third, the G, and also the flat five, the B flat. And you can also use your Dorian scale. With the 
hip note in that scale being the natural sixth, the C sharp. Somebody asked me recently, how do you know when to use these different harmonic implications, i.e. using a minor third over a dominant seventh groove? I've said this in my previous tutorials, although I really think that it's worth repeating. Um, use your ears is my best advice. If it sounds right, then it is right. You know, as your experience broadens by playing with different musicians and in various different styles, this is when you learn to trust your ears and apply your own discretion, taste and creativity in, in the different environments that you're playing in. Now, these hip notes are not exclusive characteristics to Bobby, but highly synonymous to funk. But what is brilliant about Bobby's approach is the way that he decorates a groove with slides and hammer-ons and other techniques, whilst incorporating these hip notes and upper harmonic extensions. And something that I really like about his playing is his use of range on the bass. Combined, all these elements really fill out the rhythm section, just like in the intro of the study piece. trio setting like this, like the study piece, in order to give the melody some extra support, I've heard Bobby incorporate the melody into a groove. For example, in the head section of the study piece. Also, in places where there is space in the groove and melody, what I've heard Bobby do in an environment similar to this is fill out the space with like rhythmically appropriate dead notes, which subtly supports the ensemble and keeps the groove moving forward. Just like Rocco from Tower of Power, who Bobby is admittedly influenced. So now let's check out the bass solo section. I wanted to incorporate some typical Bobby Vega type ideas, which I kind of be, would be good really because it's a, in the style of Bobby Vega tutorial. Um, I wanted to incorporate some typical ideas into a bass solo section just to show you how useful some of these ideas can be for soloing. So first of all, using chords, using the upper harmonic extensions, using the minor third, the G, and also the natural sixth from the Dorian scale, the C sharp, to create chords, harmonics, incorporating lines into a groove bass solo, bends, and also using the open strings to your advantage to create some cool pull off effects. quote from Rocco which I think really helps um, back up my point about playing a groove embellished solo. Um, Rocco was asked at a clinic, so Rocco what is groove? And his response was, the only way that he could describe it was, imagine that you're walking, you're strolling down the street, down the high street, all the shops and everything, with all your guys, 
you're hanging out, then all of a sudden somebody comes along with a brick and throws it through a shop window in front of you and then he said, and that's messing up the groove. It's often the case that playing with a pick isn't something that always comes first for bass players, including myself. You know, as bass players, we're often attracted to groove bass music, which is played with your fingers. Um, not all of it, obviously, but a lot of it. Um, so we need to address technical issues in order to execute our musical ideas with a pick. I will say in addition, Bobby Vega uses a Dunlop 73 Tortex pick, Jim Dunlop, and, and he uses it on the fat side, like that. Personally, that, that doesn't really work for me. I, I play, it on the, play it on the pointy side. I think you've just really got to find out what works for you. And that goes for everything really, you know, gear, bases. Um, so anyway, a few exercises to start with. Um, we firstly need to address alternate picking with our up and down strokes so that we can develop some agility. Then we can start to move across strings like so. In my personal opinion, I think that it's a good idea just to pay a bit of attention to your right hand and the alternate picking and the crossing the strings whilst, whilst producing dead notes, just to begin with. Um, then once you're comfortable with that, then you can start to incorporate harmony and running your scales and different intervals. And then by doing that you're getting to know how your bass sounds at different parts of your instrument with a pick and ultimately get to know your instrument with a pick well enough that you don't have to think about it anymore and you can just concentrate on the music. Ultimately, we want to develop the killer groove and time feel which Bobby Vega has got down to a T. Now the only way to capture great feel is by playing along with the greats. Great feel. Now what I do regularly is find drum grooves from records that I want to absorb. So I take the track, I put it into my DAW, my sequencer, I have Logic. Um, and if you're lucky, you'll find a track with a drum break. Then what I'll do, I'll loop it, set up a loop, and I'll just sit on the groove. And I'll do some technique exercises like that. Um, you know, alternate picking on one string, alternate picking across strings, start running some scales, come up with a couple of different groove ideas. And whilst I'm doing that, I'm locking in with the feel and every little nuance that the drummer is providing. Um, a great example to do this with, um, a groove that I did this a lot with and still do, is um, from James Brown's Fuggy Drummer, which is played by Clyde Stubblefield. Check it out. 
Practicing with a metronome certainly has its place in music practice. But by doing this, by playing along with the greats and playing them with records, um, you are allowing yourself to absorb their musicality and their feel, and hopefully, you know, some of their greatness will rub off on you. Another little tip that I wanted to share with you was something that, that I do, I still do on a regular basis, is talking about the feel uh, rubbing off on you by listening to the greats. Do this with bass players as well and musicians of all different instruments. You know, find find a Bobby Vega track that you really like, get the track, put it in your sequencer, loop it and transcribe it so accurately and play it so accurately so when you're playing along with it you can no longer hear it. All you're hearing is you playing it. You have got to listen to every little nuance to capture the greatness, essentially. Thanks for watching once again, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Check out the suggested listening, and check out all the other sides to Bobby Vega's playing, because you could spend a long time there. Don't forget to hit subscribe, there's a lot more videos and exciting things coming your way on my channel very soon. Say hello on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, I'd love to hear from you all. And um, Get practicing and I'll see you next time. And remember, there's always something to learn from every baseline. <coughs>